Shalom Chavrim. It is nice to get a chance to come be with you again this afternoon. And we have a very special guest uh, the, this evening, Sister Mina Lee from uh, Faithful Walk Healing Ministries. Uh, and her website is faithfulwalkhealingministries.blogspot.com. We'll put that on the uh, uh, video here so you can actually see it. And uh, something that has weighed heavily on um, my heart recently after having a a dream that kind of troubled me um, and I've seen this before and uh, it was kind of interesting because Sister Mina Lee actually uh, contacted me and uh, we talked a lot about the racial tensions that are brewing in the United States and not so much from uh, from anything as far as a spiritual side but it's just the enemy it's Satan has come in he's trying to to um, upset the people and to bring a divide in this country and there's a lot of things we're going to touch on tonight that i think is very important for you to to be aware of to be vigilant about as well and uh and then also that we might strengthen uh strengthen the the the, the brotherhood between uh the christians regardless of what uh ethnicity that we have in our backgrounds and I say that also because I speak a lot about the Muslim people as well the Arabs uh, around the world and I'm not against my brothers that, that are Christians and even the ones that are not because we want to win as many people to Christ as we possibly can and we have to remember people are human nonetheless they're still human beings that need Jesus Christ and uh, so we're in a very serious hour very serious time that we're living in um, kind of the one of the things that got this kind of sparked, Sister Mina Lee called me uh, the other day after I'd shared with her a dream that I had, and the dream did trouble me because I dreamed early one morning of a uh, a race riot that had broke out in the United States and it had actually it, it went all across the United States. I remember someone telling me in the dream that California, especially Los Angeles, was under a tremendous uh, violent attack there. We were trying, my wife and I and our family, we were trying to get to a place away from uh, the city atmosphere and just even trying to get to a countryside somewhere where it was away from uh, any type of urban settings really proved to be a major challenge. Uh, we were on some type of uh, either a van or a bus and I remember as we were going under a bridge it, the, it was just being pelted with everything you could possibly think of. and. Uh, it, it just really was troublesome to, to see that. Uh, and uh, so anyway, without any further delay, I'd like to introduce to you Sister Mina Lee with Faithful Life Healing Ministries, excuse me, Faithful Walk Healing Ministries. God bless you, Sister Mina. God bless you, Brother Steve. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Great. Uh, so I'm glad to be a to part talk. of this and yes, um, I am concerned too in regards to what's going on in specifically in this country, um, especially what has unfolded recently in the past couple of months. And um, as you spoke, you know, we, we, or you stated earlier, we spoke a couple of days ago in regards to your dream that you had. And um, as I share with you and I'll share with everyone else, um, the the next morning after you giving me that dream because we didn't get a chance to finish our conversation that day um, I woke up and the presence of God was very heavy on me and um, I mean just instantly I mean just laying in the bed and as soon as I opened my eyes the Lord just began to just weigh heavy on my spirit in regards to doing um, a video in regards to the racial tension that is emerging in this country, um, specifically or recently behind the Trayvon Martin case. And so just, you know, going over your dream that you had told me the day before, um, we, you know, of course, didn't get a chance to talk about it, but we talked about it later. I began to just go over the things that um, had happened over the recent months and you know, a couple of months ago, anywhere from two to three months ago, um, when this whole thing erupted and, well, of course, it went back further than that. But when the trial started, I should really say, um, and the president, you know, put his, and I'll say two cents in it, um, in regards to it, I told my husband then that this 
case was going to become our Arab Spring. And we know February 11, 2011 um, is when the protests started in Egypt, which started out as quiet uh, protests against Morsi, and it erupted into what has now become a two and a half, almost three year Arab Spring that has caused riots and civil war in several countries. And so I said this to my husband at that time, and I told him, I says, you know, this is going to be our Arab Spring, and that this was going to be uh, what the administration was going to use to implement martial law. Amen. Amen. You know, Sister Mina, that's interesting that you bring that up, because there are so many things uh, and, and, and that we see that are happening that just seem to be kind of odd. Uh, and and, and uh, I generally don't even really go much into this type of subject here, uh, other than the fact that God has just uh, been kind enough to show me some things that, that are on the horizon uh, for the nation and to make Christians aware of the tensions that are going to go on out there. Because it, it, this is not a flesh and blood battle, and that's something people need to understand. Uh, you know, you know, the black people and the things that they have suffered, it reminds me a lot of times of the, uh, the Palestinian people in Israel. Because when I lived in Israel, um, especially early on, there was a time where I did not care for Palestinian people whatsoever. Uh, being Jewish and the tensions that the Jews feel with, with not just the Palestinians, but it could be any Arab people whatsoever, but especially more so for the Palestinian people, but God had to deal with me on that issue as well uh, because they're human beings like we are. They need Jesus Christ just as much as what I did. And, um, and here we are now, we're faced with a similar situation in America. You know, whether it's the white people or the black people, the color really has nothing to do with it other than the fact that Satan is using that as his way of causing strife and tension in, 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 in the nation here and around the world. It's, all, it's the same devil, it's just getting on a different group of people. And when we talk about the, uh, and I'll just quickly touch this here and, and want you to really kind of go into more of this with me as well. When we talk about uh, martial law and the, and the president looking basically for an excuse to be able to declare martial law, it's just odd how all the things that are happening, I mean, we've heard, uh, you know, here and there you hear people on the internet speaking about FEMA and FEMA buying up ammunition. Uh, and, and true, you can go into Walmart. In fact, since, this, since we began to discuss this, just after my own curiosity, I went to Walmart just to see, you know, because I, I hear this stuff, okay, FEMA saying that they're buying up all the ammunition, and lo and behold, there wasn't hardly anything on the shelf for ammunition in Walmart, a place that you would think that they would have it. And then I went to uh, uh, another uh, Bass Pro Shop, which is a huge hunting facility. And um, other than maybe 12 gauge shotgun and muzzle loading type of ammunition, there was hardly nothing on the shelves. A simple one, like 22 bullets, the most unlethal type of weapon you could prob probably have, you know, just a little little pea shooter gun, you know. They said they did not have any ammo for a 22, and if you had a 22 Magnum, they said they have not had it in months and don't know if they ever will get it again. So, just interesting things that we're seeing happen. Go ahead, sis. Yes, definitely, and I agree to that. And, I mean, I'm just going to kind of go back a little bit, and I'm just going to state this. Um, I'm definitely... I didn't, I grew up first and foremost, I was born and raised in the city of Chicago and Chicago, unfortunately, right now has become the murder capital of the nation. And I grew up on the South side of Chicago and, um, spent 13 years there. And, you know, my, I still have family, my father and his side of the family still reside in Chicago. Um, I know a lot about Chicago. I know a lot about the Chicago politics. I know a lot about President Obama. I know a lot about the church he came out of. I know a lot about Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton because I'm from Chicago. But I'm just going to say this. Um, you know, as a, 
and I, I put this lightly as a black person, you know, I've been called, called all kinds of names. I've been called trader, sellout, Oreo, whatever, um, because... Uh, my family, first and foremost, is biracial. My husband is a Messianic Jew. Um, praise God. Um, but, you know, it, it, I've dealt with both sides of the fence in the, in the sense that um, I can relate to prejudices because I, I didn't grow up uh, learning prejudice. But when we moved to Colorado in 1993, um, I went from, you know, predominantly black school to... Uh, all white school with five blacks, you know, and 900 children. And, uh, you know, I, I was tormented. And so I, I know what it's like, and even as an adult, I have went into different places and I've been discriminated against. But on the other side, you know, I've, I've lived in well-kept communities. I grew up middle upper class. Um, you know, my children went to magnet schools. So, you know, I know kind of both sides of the fence. And, and so I sympathize on both ends, but, you know, as a black person, I want people to understand that what is unfolding right now has really nothing to do with race. It's race is being used as an excuse. And that's what I need the people to understand and see what's, you know, what it's not about. It's about dealing with things for what they are and not how they make us feel. Because that way you see out of trouble. Again, it's like Ephesians chapter 6. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it's not the people we're dealing with in these situations. It's the spirit behind the situation. And that's what I want to kind of uncover Satan's plan and plot behind this situation. So let me just say this. As far as Trayvon Martin is concerned, um... Just in my opinion, this is merely my opinion. I do, I did not uh, agree with the verdict. I didn't, um, you know. Now, whether or not it was racial, I, I, I personally do not believe that the man killed him through racial motive, motives. I believe it was a power trip that the man had. Now, this is only my opinion, but nevertheless, even if it was racial, even if it wasn't racial, here's what we need to see as Christians. The fact of the matter is, whether it was or wasn't, this administration has used this situation to start a civil war. And I'm going to throw out some facts Man. here, if that's okay with you. I'm just going to throw out a few facts. Um, first and foremost, um, first let me go back. In 2012, Saints... There was at least a dozen or so people that I knew, both black and white, who had dreams of a civil war coming to this country. This was long before Trayvon Martin was even heard of. And Amen. through this, this civil war, martial law was implemented. And several of these people that I knew posted their dreams on YouTube, saying so they can go and look this up on YouTube, they're still there, okay? And so that's the first thing. Second, what do you mean there's no such thing as gun control, only people control? Tell me what that means. Tucker, this is part of your ideological ploy by this administration. They're not being authentic with America, whether it's the sequester health care or the gun control issue. What they do is they manipulate an emotional crisis, a national emotional crisis, to further an ideological agenda which involves, involves the evaporation the slow disintegration of your civil rights, your liberties, your ability to live and let live. And it's a disturbing pattern. That Second of all, now going back to the current events, so now we have had this Trayvon Martin case. This situation has been used, this boy has, this young man who was killed is being used as a martyr. He is being worshipped almost so to speak and idolized and you know the first commandment is thou shalt not have no other gods before the almighty god okay and the people Amen. have taken this situation to an extreme yes it's sad that a, a young man got killed it is sad you know but how many young men get killed every day the fact of the matter is coming from chicago I mean, in 2005, no, two, not 2005, it was 2008, 
Chicago had over 600 murders in one year, and it is 90% black on black crime. We didn't hear nobody talking about it then, you know, but again, the Trayvon Martin case came out and everybody was it's in so it. interesting how that um, when it when it does seem to be something that could possibly be a racial motive behind it, then the media really jumps on that type of particular case. But uh, the epidemic of the um, the black population attacking one another it, it, it's, it's sad. It's sad to begin with, and it just shows that there's a lack of God. Um, you know, it's really sad. Go ahead, well, sister. Well, brother, this is this is what people have not understood. Because a black man, and I'm just gonna put it out there, has been voted into this administration or is a president. You know. The mistake, you know, and I, I'm not talking about the unsaved because the Bible says we cannot judge the world. We can't judge the people who are not saved, but we are given the right as Christians to judge within the church. That is written. A lot of people misconstrue the judge not lest she be judged. Famous chapter, Matthew chapter seven. Um, you know, what's so funny is that people like to take one verse and create an entire religion from it without reading the whole chapter. And I tell people, well, what does the next verse say after that? And nine times out of 10, people don't even know because they haven't read the whole chapter, which, you know, the right. chapter yourself, you know, is based off of hypocrisy. You know, and this is the same matter that you judge, you'll be judged. So basically, before you judge, you need to make sure your own household is clean is what to sum it up. What Jesus is saying, don't be a hypocrite when you do judge. But we don't realize that our world without the Bible, is based on judgment. I mean, people judge you when they interview you. They judge you, uh, you know, whether you're going to have a job you get. You stand before judges to get a traffic ticket, you know, or a court of law, you know. You, you get judged constantly. Every day we're judged by people. We're judged at our jobs, in the schools, on the streets, in the churches. I mean, we are. So our life is based off of judgment. God is the ultimate judge. In the end, but but here's the deal. This is what upsets me. Um, the fact that Christians voted this president into the administration just based off of his race instead of doing credentials, doing what I call a background check on this person, and that's what upset me. And I'm I just want to come out and just say this, you know. And everyone doesn't agree with me on this, but I still stand on it. This administration does not care about black people. And proof of that is just go and do your research. I mean, I currently live in the state of Maryland, and I'm just absolutely appalled at the poverty level in this state coming from the South. And the majority of it is black people, and there's absolutely no assistance for the people in this state. But yet Maryland is a liberal state, a democratic state, so democratic and so liberal that there was almost a war that erupted out here during the second term elections because of the few conservative people and Republicans and a friend who ran for uh, governor actually of this state is a friend of my husband's and he has his own radio show here in Maryland was talking about how the people were literally had broken into his house. I mean, they were ripping signs out of people's yards and ripping bumper stickers off of their cars here in Montgomery County, okay? And because someone was voting for a Republican or a conservative. And you know what? And yet all of that said and done, what has this administration done for the state of Maryland? I'm in ministry and I do I do charities or whatever you want to call it. I just feed the body of Christ, period. And I have people that have come to my ministry who didn't have places to stay, Brother Steve, who, who didn't have enough food, who couldn't pay their bills. These are black people and there was nothing in this state to help them. Nothing, nothing, no funds, no shelters, not saying that they don't have shelters, but what little they have is filled to the rim, and it's not enough compared to the, the ratio 
of the people that need it versus the basically kind of like supply and demand. And so that's what the people are not seeing because no one's doing their homework. People's faces are too stuck in their iPads and their iPhones, you know, or Facebook instead of looking at the facts of what's going on. And and that's right. what's blind. And see, that's where the enemy is coming in, too, because Jesus clearly stated multiple things. First of all, he told us, keep watch. He The scripture says that we are to be sober in and out of season. Um, it was the apostle Paul that said that God would not have us ignorant or in the dark. So we as Christians should be alert of these things that so that why so that this that satan does not come in and basically pull the wool over our eyes because he's doing what he's seeking he's lurking in every corner seeking whom he can devour so if your back is turned because you're in your text messages then guess what he's gonna sneak up on you and that's what's happening that's right. That's what's and, and it's so true. And, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned George County there, Maryland, because uh, uh, recently I was up in D.C. Actually, I've been up there a couple of times, but uh, the time before last when I was in D.C., I was riding with a cab driver and he mentioned to me how that the ec economics there in D.C., that they have inflated it so high. Uh, he said that it's practically impossible to be able to live in D.C. whatsoever. He said, in fact, most people that work in D.C. don't live in D.C. And, um, and, and what's interesting is this man pointed out to me, and uh, uh, he said that it's being done intentionally to drive out the people they don't want living there. Imagine that. That's true. And D.C., which is 30 minutes south of me, um, has the highest percentage per capita of HIV and AIDS patients um, via through drug use. And it is among the black people. It's 65 percent of them are African-Americans in the D.C. metropolitan area. And, and they're driving them out. But what what are they doing for them? That it goes back to this administration. What is this administration doing for them? Nothing, you know. And so kind of going back or drawing back into the Trayvon Martin case, this is just what I want to say. Um, and this is the reason why uh, you and I have come together today. Um, in the last five or six weeks, there has been multiple reports of killings, rapes, and, and assault of groups, in most cases, although there have been individuals, but mostly groups of blacks, all black men, who have assaulted, killed, and raped white people in basically revenge of this Trayvon Martin case, okay? Um, just to, I'm just, I'm not going to go through all of the lists, but I'm just going to point out some, some recent ones and some, uh, major highlights and, and, and you saints, you all can definitely Google this or actually post them on the screen for people to see so that they can see it's not just that we're saying something these, you know, it, it, it's in reality, it's another type of, so it's a hate crime as well. It's just reversing the role. Whereas uh, we have seen, uh, even back with the Los Angeles riots, back when um, uh, Rodney King, nearly to death, uh, a crime against humanity, no doubt, uh, my own brother um, uh, was there, Daniel Danoon. He was actually there because uh, Danny was going to college there at uh, UCLA, and he lived down in Chinatown. It's where he preferred to be at, and uh, he had got an apartment there. And uh, I remember clearly Danny saying, he said, I'm on top of uh, the apartment building here. And he says, you're not going to believe this. He said, they're burning the town. <laughs> you know, so, but with him, it was kind of comical. Of course, he wasn't in the middle of the violent part itself. He wasn't, it wasn't his building on fire. Uh, but, you know, and he, even when the riots over Rodney King broke out, there were more of the black people that were hurt in it as a result of other black people expressing their anger. Now, naturally, there were, there were white people that were beaten uh, as well. And, and yet, of, co of course, you know, the, the, the biggest crime of all is that the policeman actually walked. 
Uh, it just shows the corruption that is in the government system everywhere. And, and, and I spent time in law enforcement. I've seen it firsthand myself. Uh, and the funny thing is, let me just say this too, especially for the viewers, whether, you, you know, regardless of the ethnicity, ethnicity of our viewers that are, that are watching this program, as a law enforcement officer, I've seen law enforcement do this, not just to the black people, but to their own people as well. It's, in law enforcement, it's not just, and this is why I want people to understand this, it's not just that the people, um, you know, that they're against one particular race or not. They, they in my opinion, they do profile. Uh, you don't have to just be black. If they think that you're quote unquote white trash, uh, they got something against you, they're going to do this to you as well. And and I personally took up for a, a, a white man that was uh, chased down for running a stop sign. Uh, he didn't want to pull over because he'd been drinking and he didn't want to get to the UI. So he just tried to drive home and get away with this. This is back in, I think, at 1984, 85, somewhere in that time frame there. And uh, when the police finally got him, to, got at his house there, uh, he, they had about 20-something cruisers, uh, you know, following this guy and they beat him nearly to death he's a white guy now I had white officers white guy so see it's not a matter so much as uh, sometimes color and that's what people don't understand they were angry with this guy and it, i remember sister mina you brought out to me a point about power trip uh trayvon martin no doubt was on a power trip and 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 i agree with you 100 percent you know you find that especially with people that are not quote unquote law enforcement officers, they're security officers. And for them, it's even more of a power trip. They want to show that they've got some kind of authority to be able to do something. And Trayvon Martin just ended up being at the wrong place at the wrong time with a, with a, with a guy that's got an issue here. Uh, so should he have been convicted? I mean, according to the jury that we that, we, that, that, that even spoke afterwards, the problem was not that they didn't believe that he was guilty of something here. It was the way the trial is presented, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and that's where they had the problem at. Uh, so our, our, our system is messed up as it is, and so therefore there's many people that go unpunished uh, for crimes just because they, somebody thinks they're somebody, and, and, and I've, I've met many people in my day that were in jail, incarcerated, that I personally thought were innocent.